pursuing peace is the only avenue which is compatible with our culture and creed. Let there be no more war. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, is the risen Lord. Well done and welcome to this very intriguing finding in today's biblical analysis, okay? Um, after many years on and off studying the Bible in various fields of interest and exploration, I came to a blinding realisation quite inspired today, out of the blue, although it's a passage I've known about for some time, it just clicked as to what it might mean this morning. The 25th of November 2018. I hope you don't mind this, buddy. You, you've got to stop being so obsessive with me. You will not endorse me. Feel far. I feel the holy conscious flow. You gotta leave me alone. You gotta find your own way. I'm not your lover. I was your friend. Good luck. You will not endorse me. And with that, my angel wings depart. Subscribe to a higher belly button. And I divorce my reason from Kanchai. You don't know what that means. You don't have to. It's very fluid specific. And we are being shut down slowly by the invasion of subtle. Can't use the word now. Coming to uh, create uh, solutions to an otherwise perfect holy sphere of wonderment that we had established within a cranial field of a beautiful indifference. I hope they maintain the peace and they don't use Skull Douglas methodology to create anything untoward. If that was to occur, that would be a grave sin, I believe. But until then, we have things to look forward to, like Toy Story 3. Thank you. Look after your onions, and don't flip your biscuits. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why, 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 why shouldn't there be a dream for a multitude of men underneath this crazy dystopia? Why shouldn't there be an escape plan for a huge plethora of people? so that we may live again and dance again in the fragrant meadows of the summer mists. We must find an escape route. Copy that over and out. Get his people out. Fascinating. Have evidence here that you can have a commu you can communicate with a seven year old girl over a mobile phone. I know that sounds a bit dodgy, but she's my daughter. Right, and I've just had the most amazing conversation. Okay, we, uh, she's somehow got hold of her mother's phone and this is the first texting experience I've ever had with my daughter and she's seven years old. So she starts, okay, it goes, hello, uh, hello, Abla? Why? Yes. Media understanding, okay. Hello, buddy, I love you. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. So I know that this is pretty authentic that it's a youngster. Try and write me a message. Thumbs up. Okay, she gets it. Because she can read a bit, but she's not very good at writing so far. Okay, daddy's coming home. Night is a great day, night with me. Hee hee. Loads of poos, right? She, <sighs> you and your poos. Lol. She gets lol. Okay. Do you want to see me today? Yes. Really? Yes. Ask mummy. Okay. Full on conversation with a youngster. Proving that the texting is a, a, a possible at that age. 
So there you go. If that's important to anyone out there, apart from anyone scourless or disgusting, then take that as development of neurolinguistics at a definite age where such a simple, humble thing as getting a text from your daughter is a ray of sunshine to the soul. So what I did was, is that I made a basic altar to celebrate my daughter wanting to see me again in my beautiful flat. Even though Sarah wants to probably get rid of me. Yeah, well, I suppose... I, 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 all I can say is that I ain't, I ain't never done a little bit of Kusranum, you know. I ain't never done that, and I never would. If anyone did that to me, I'd do a Joshua Ramen. Or a good one, depending on who's the way you look at it. Because it was from the door, it was from Holy. So, you know, I have to realize I am a genius. I do know that. I know it because I can feel it every day, compounding in my highly advanced cranium. My thoughts ricochet off sensitive matter at every conceivable juncture with an unceasing pulse for life, the universe and everything ricocheting through what soul I have and possess. And that's just in order to make a cup of tea. So anyway, there you go, a little bit about me. I hope you're well. As I said, you rot into this decadent fury of solitude and despair. It was all love and kisses until things got ropey financially. And then, until death to his part, my ass. Nothing but Boromir's hairy tonsils. You will never win, evil. Lego lasses, queasy elbows. Okay, now look. There are apparently only 25 passages in the Bible, or phrases rather, in the entire Bible, not just the New Testament, but the Old as well which are in capital letters. Now of all of them, this one, to the unknown God, is written in a very subliminal alternative typeface. Let that sink in for a moment. Now I believe this phrase is a code. Okay, this whole passage is a code. That's why the capital letters are in a different typeface. And if you read it, I think it could be a... Me it, it's a long story. But it could be a, a reference to the retrocausality project working. And the retrocausality project is a present future based theorem analysis think tank into potentiality of the quantum human mind. And there are clues here which uh, suggest that it was possible, feasible, and this is the response from a history to know that the project worked. If you go to Acts 17, verse 23, now 23 is an important number in the Illuminati project. For I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Un I unto you. To the unknown God. Now, this is one of the. This is like the only passage, the, the holy phrase to the unknown God, in the whole book, which is written in a specific capital letter typeface. The other areas where it uses capital letters aren't denoted in this particular t typeface. Therefore, it is not unreasonable to suggest it is a subliminal hidden message in the Bible. So we read around it. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, see, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Okay, so what it's about, okay, he's alluding to the creation. Okay, so quantum, because in the modern world we're all dealing with how's the world made, how's the world created. Quantum thinking is big, you know, and how's, how's matter created, for instance. That, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel, feel all after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. 
For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to thank the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And at times of his ignorance, God winked at. Sorry, let me repeat that because my reading is not very brilliant. And the times of his, this ignorance, God winked at. Now there is an interesting passage. God winked at knowingly. All right? Let's see, read, read it again. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay? So he's not, he's not being judgmental. He's not being, he's not being, he's not being wrathful here, okay? He doesn't hate them at all, all right? He's saying, and by the times of this ignorance, all right, God winked at He's like, I know what's wrong with you guys, don't worry. You just got to repent and everything will be okay. So we're going to repent. Because he has appointed a day in the, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised them, him from the dead. Well, I believe that is a message to the future, to a very specific person. And I think that's huge. And I think it's to do with the quantum theory and transdimensional behaviours. Okay? Because that's the point of, that's the gravitas of the, to the unknown God. It's written... In a, in, a, in a slightly different coded structure. And that is to emphasize a subliminal message to the right person. Good luck. The sins of an abomination ringworm. Don't think this will be forgotten in the heavens.